to let me do some of my photography work here. And now, that a little over one minute, almost two minutes in, let's go ahead and open this up. We are going to be using a uh, Trappist glass tonight. So let me get some shots of that. It's beautiful. I really love the way that that's wrapped up, that cage there. Very nice. So, let's open this up. Listen for it. See if I can get some light going on behind that. And here we go. Or is amber and very clear. Let me see if I can back up on that and get a nice shot of that. Very nice. <clears throat> See if we can get some color going on there. Well, definitely down low in that glass, there's a nice translucent, translucent copper color. As we look up at the body, it's more of a dark brown. The head is quickly dissipating. Um, and I would say that it's a, a tan, definitely an off-white or a tan. Let's see if we can get some detail there. Nice lacing. I would definitely say that that body is clear, um, slightly dull, got some particles, visible particles, and is, uh, I would say, copper. Beautiful, beautiful brew.
the head is hanging on. It's not as thick as it was during the first pour, but it's definitely not going away. Very strong aroma. Um, I would say that it's sweet uh, rather than sharp. I would say that uh, there's a lot of wine in that aroma. It's very nice. I would say I can smell some roasted malt. Definitely some fresh baked bread. Some caramel notes. It uh, reminds me of a field. Uh, or maybe of a, a cellar. Definitely um, brings up visions of a castle or, or a uh, the Wizard of Oz or something like that. Very nice aroma. Let's give it a taste. I would say that's a middle to high strength intensity. Uh, definitely well balanced. It is sweet at the start and then very quickly sour and as it finishes it becomes more and more bitter but the bitterness gets um, balanced again by the sweetness. The sweetness never really leaves. The sourness is, a, is an underlying note throughout. It's a very nice flavor. Delicious. I would say uh, I can taste toast, a lot of nuts, um, some toffee, definitely some coffee, but more like tea, caramel, a lot of earth, a lot of resin. It's, it's delicious. Very nice flavor. Let's try again for mouthfeel. very creamy. Um, there's uh, not a lot of slickness or drying at all. The alcohol is not omnipresent. I mean for 10% ABV it's it's expertly hidden. Uh, not even really a warming note at the end. There's a, a lot of that bitterness that comes through that's probably actually that alcohol as it goes down. It is full-bodied Lively carbonation, but not overly excessive. Um, the length of the finish is, I would say, more long than medium. Uh, the intensity of the finish is fairly strong. and I mean, it's still on my palate, st still sort of sitting there. And I would say that the finish is more bitter than sweet. Generally speaking, like every McKellar brew I've ever had, this one is expertly done. Very, very delicious. Uh, I would have it again in a heartbeat, although this one costs $25 for the bomber. So um, that's a new high for me for paying for McKellar brews. Uh, I don't think that's a new high per fluid ounce, but it's definitely it's up there. Um, very fresh. Very uh, tasty. I, I don't I don't know uh, what year this was, but it's definitely not old. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I would say that if you can find McKellar anywhere, grab it and uh, taste it because I think that he is doing some of the best work in craft brewing. Thanks very much as always. Uh, this is John Lamasney for beercritic.wordpress.com. See ya.